I'm John Wilson. Welcome to Owned and Operated. Twice a week, we talk about home service businesses. And if you're a home service entrepreneur, then this is going to be the show for you. We talk about our own business in residential plumbing, HVAC, and electric. And we also talk about business models that we just find interesting. Let's get into it. Jack and I dive into HR and recruitment, and it is a it's a good one. Uh, Jack is still speechless. I'm sort of watching him either speechless or cheering over there. Uh, but the big things we cover is when to bring on your first HR or recruitment hire. It's a really big hire, matters a lot for companies. Uh, how to design a recruitment process that gets you winners, and then how to identify winners. So it's a great episode. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to hit like and subscribe. Hey, today's episode is brought by Service Scalers. So Service Scalers is a home service marketing agency. And what they do is they help home service companies like me, like you, like Jack, drive leads in an affordable rate and at scale. So they've run two of our brands for a little bit over a year now, and they're doing an awesome job. Uh, So we're really excited to partner with them because we know that we've been really happy with what they've done for us. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hey, how are you doing, John? Welcome back, man. I'm good. I'm good. I'm I'm ready to I'm ready to chat today. We're diving into HR. We're diving into recruitment. I'm I'm ready to kill it. Yeah, I mean, auxiliary functions of a business as you start to grow are some of these like huge questions that you get. Right? Yeah. It's when do you when do you get an HR person? I mean, we joke around yeah. that one of our techs who's probably the least HR person is our HR person, but at yeah. one point really, really, really soon we need, it keeps me up at night. So I mean, maybe we start there. Like when, when did you get a recruiter? I mean, that's how I started all these, these, (laughs) when did John do this X, Y, or Z? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think HR is an interesting one and I'll give my history on it, but it's like, it's one of those things that everybody knows they need. And everybody knows they want Mm -hmm. and they, nobody really knows when it happens, but I think we can actually line up some really clear, like, here's when this happens, which is, which is, I think helpful. So we got HR. Yeah. Yeah. So when we got HR, we were at 50 employees when the biggest lesson, like. When should you have gotten HR? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was 50. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, so that's... It, was, it was too late. It was too late. So like mm-hmm. what I remember hearing this podcast, it was like 2019 and Brandon and I were sitting in an office or no, it was like a, a weekly live video interview from Certain Path. And we were sitting in this office together listening to it. And it was about recruitment, which was like, obviously recruitment's always a top five concern in a business, like the people always, always a top concern. Mm -hmm. And Gus from Milestone down in, down in DFW, he said, if you're serious about your business, you at $3 million, you need to have a recruiter. And, and we were at like 3.4 and, and I was like, you're out of your damn mind. Like, what are you talking about? I need a recruiter. Like Mm -hmm. I, like we're like every day is a fire. Like we, we don't have the cash for that. It seemed like such an unnecessary, insane use of overhead dollars. And and I thought that he was Mm -hmm. so out of touch with reality, which he was a hundred million dollar company. So it's like, that makes sense if he's out of touch with reality. But like, I've reflected back on that moment so often because it's, it's probably one of the most wrong like one of the times I've been the most wrong Say in it. my entire there career. Like it is the, like, I was so dumb. Like, and, and like now looking back, I'm like, Oh my God. Like he's right. Like $3 million is the perfect size to have a recruiter. Perfect size. And when you say recruiter, I mean that that's, are you referring to like an HR and recruiter or some, cause I mean, at a $3 million value of $3 million gross revenue, that person, you don't have enough time. They're not recruiting full time, yeah. I guess is what I'm saying. There's other functions yeah. that they so can when take I, care when of. So when I say that, when I say that, I'm, I'm saying a majority of their time is focused on recruiting and retaining new employees. So that could mm-hmm. be 51%. And maybe the other 49% is payroll and benefits administration. 
And three three million dollars isn't what three million dollars today in twenty twenty three dollars is not what it was five years ago. So maybe three million dollars five years ago was twenty team members. Maybe it was twenty five team members. Whereas today, maybe it's fifteen yeah. to twenty. So obviously a little bit different, but I really do think that that twenty to thirty mark of employee size is a good time to be thinking about someone whose majority of their job is recruitment. And there's there's obviously a lot of other things going on in HR, but like most of the most of the complicated stuff that happens with HR happens after a hundred employees. So like our current HR team is we have a payroll and benefits coordinator, we have a full-time payroll clerk, and we have two recruiters. And one of those recruiters also mm-hmm. does our onboarding. So about 70% of her time is recruitment and 30% is onboarding like the first day, right? Those first two days. And then the other one's full-time recruitment. So we have 1.7 people focused full-time on, on recruiting. So that's our current stack. And I, so when we brought on our first HR person, a generalist, heavy focus on recruitment, but it happened at 50 employees, it probably should have happened at 30. Yeah, yeah, because like you always, we talked about this last episode, but like it took way too long for me to understand how much a good hire moves the business. Yeah, and I think that we forget too. You get you get pigeonholed into this. I don't want to call it being afraid of your employees, but being afraid to lose employees totally. because it's so hard to totally. hire new employees, and so you let them get away with things that they one shouldn't yeah. be getting away with, and two, you're not holding them accountable like you should. Yep. Building the correct culture. Because you don't have someone on the back end who is really upholding that culture by recruiting top talent. I mean, I I think I tweeted the same thing like a week ago. It was like, it is very, it is very difficult or impossible to hold your team accountable if you don't have a strong recruiting function. Because exactly that, you can't let, you you can't do anything about it. Like there's no, Mm -hmm. people can get away with murder if you're never going to fire, right? Whereas we have a pretty healthy habit of firing people that aren't doing the thing like we want everyone to win and we want to be an amazing place to work but we also have expectations yeah and and i think that that's what we run into at being a significantly smaller company i mean there's that fear right if we lose two of our guys two of our techs right out the gate i mean we are struggling service managers are going into the field and all this kind of stuff so the minute even i i would i would say even before 30 employees you, you look into part-time, I mean, part-time or, or some kind of getting some kind of, what do you call them, temp recruiter? Um, not not for temps yeah. per se, but like a fraction, like a fractional CEO or sure. CFO, yeah. how they do that. Picking up a fractional HR yep. recruiter who can actually do that function for you. I mean, we've been chewing on it too, especially having some kind of auxiliary site that we're going to pick up here in the next two to three months. Yeah. So, I mean, we're starting ahead of time. I mean, you gave me that advice and I'm, I sat down one day and I went, man, if I lose half the employees there because they just don't care because it's a new, new yep. owner, that, that business is going to tank right out the gate right. if we're losing some yeah. And, and if I have the ability to bring people in right, right immediately, at least key people, key yeah. positions, key points, that, that fear goes away, yep. right? Cause somebody's on top of that. Someone's owning it. So like right now we are the best at recruitment that we've ever been. There's a couple of reasons for that. One is just capacity. Like, I just, I get it. I have more recruiters than most companies my size. And, and I, I'm like, I'm not immune to that fact. The other one is we are v- like, we don't turn it off. And that is a, that is a non-negotiable. So what we've told our team is there's no safe word. Like no one's calling uncle on recruitment. If we find a million dollar plumber, we're hiring that million dollar plumber. Like we don't care. I'm going to find him a vehicle. Mm Marketing is going to drive him leads and he's going to be on your team because like we're not going to let rock stars go anywhere else except for here. And we're going to pay him like crazy to be here. So that has really helped one, hold people accountable that weren't delivering because we really can go find great rock stars any day of the week now which is amazing. And that's a new muscle that we've never been able to flex before. So last time, so you're saying you're, you're averaging 25 a week with yeah. three rock stars, one, two, three rock stars. 
Yeah. And so that really holds people's feet to the fire, knowing, hey, man, if I don't produce, they have someone who will. And I think, well, I mean, I mean we I don't like, too, I obviously don't want it to be it, like but... perceived. I, I don't think it comes off that way. But if, like, for most of our team, mm -hmm. 99% of our team is amazing. But like, yeah, there's people that aren't going to do the thing. And it just puts us in a position where we can say, hey, if you don't want to do these things, that is okay. It genuinely is. We, we probably just aren't a fit for you. And someone else is going to drive that truck by next week. And that's okay. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I'm not trying to, to be not, not caring. It's just when there's specific, when there's specific set points that need to be met in the company, especially, like I said, it's coming from a smaller company that yeah. th this is a very difficult thing to, to hold people accountable totally. to your standards, to totally. metrics that are industry wide, mm -hmm. right? Because it's, it's just, or even just attendance, where... like attendance, the, the <laughs> reason, the reason we got I'm, so good sorry, yeah. at recruitment was because of attendance, mm -hmm. which is like the craziest reason we would walk into our call center and like a third or more of our call center would be off that day, every day for three weeks straight. And it's like, what is going on? Like, I don't think to not show up all the time. And it was just constant attendance issues. So what, like I said a, a week ago or whatever, that churn in the call center is real. It's like, now we just lean in because we, we have to. So like, at this point, we just assume from now until the end of time, a new call taker starting every Monday. And that's what's happening. Because that's like, yeah. that is just how it's going to go. So that's how we got good at recruitment. Because then we started doing that with every other position. We have like our, we give three focuses a week of like, hey, here's the positions that are our big focus. Go chase them down. Go get them. I need them by next Monday. So this week was HVAC service tech, two ISRs, and an install manager for HVAC. And then next Monday, we'll set new priorities, whatever those are. But we did what we needed to do. We hired two ISRs. We hired two HVC service techs. And we're, we're going to hopefully close on an install manager on Friday. So we hit the priorities. And then we're going to go do the same thing next week. So next week, the focus is probably going to be plumbing install and HVC install. So those are going to be the marching orders. And then we're going to go get them. And then the next week, it'll be something new. I love it. Cool. Closing on employees is like, I think we were talking about this last week, like mm -hmm. closing on a deal. It feels good. Feels good. Oh, getting, getting really have, big have we talked about our closing? Have we like talked about this? Closing on. Oh my employees? gosh. Okay. Uh, well, hold on. I'm deciding if I should like say this. I, I, I'll i give a little bit. I'll give a little bit. But it's like some of this is my okay, secret sauce. Hear. Like, so, so closing, like hiring is sales, right? And like. Oh, we haven't talked about this now. Okay. I want to give the secret sauce. You got to draw them now. Okay. I'm interested. Like hiring is sales. In a sales process, there is a, there's like the eight steps or there's the 10 steps or the five steps or the whatever mm -hmm. of like, hey, I'm going to come in. I'm going to do my greeting. I'm going to talk about why we're here today. I'm going to look at your problem. I'm going to, you know, whatever, like whatever the eight steps are. And a couple months ago, I'm sitting there and I'm like, and, and we lost two rock stars. Like we didn't get them. We couldn't hire them, which was such a punch in the gut because these guys were amazing and they were going to be needle moving hires. And I'm like, why didn't, like, why didn't we get them? That, that doesn't make much sense to me. If I was a smaller company and I didn't have a lot of opportunity, I would get it. But they ended up going to companies a fourth of my size for half of the total compensation that had way less opportunity for their careers. So I'm sitting here like, what what didn't we do in the closing process mm -hmm. to demonstrate the value to my prospect that this is the right decision? So that reframed how we think about hiring, where now there's a sales corridor, literally, in our case, it's a hallway. But you know, when you talk about sales, it's like you're walking a prospect down the hallway, you got to close the doors. So like, that's what we did. So now we have a 10-step process for how we close on hires. So they come in the door, their name is on the TV, welcome, here's your name, excited to see you. You walk into the front door. Oh, I love this and, so much. And so you're quiet, I'm just, I'm like trying to yeah. absorb every single and bit of this, this is so, so you, cool. So the recruiter, the person that dragged them in, meets them at the door, because that's, that's mm -hmm. their face, that's who they know so far. 
they're like, hey, man, so excited that you're here. Like, can I give you a tour? So, so what, what used to happen is we would, this candidate would come in and we would shove them in a conference room and we'd be like, hey, fill out this paperwork and someone would get to them in 15 minutes. And it's like, well, that doesn't, like that person doesn't feel like a rock star at all. That person feels like they were discarded and it, like we're, that, that they are inconvenienced. Or like we are inconvenienced. Yeah, they, they don't want to feel like a cog in the wheel. They yeah. want to feel like hey, I'm someone here. Yeah. So like, so what would happen yeah. is these rock stars were brought in to do these interviews and they were just dragged straight to the interviewing conference room. <laughs> and, uh -huh. and I'm sitting there and I'm like, well, I don't, I don't like that. Like, I wouldn't like that. That's not cool at all. So, so we, we created a tour. So. It's and it's very intentional. You have to be like, there's like steps to the tour, right? Because what you're doing mm -hmm. is every step of the tour that you stop and talk for 10, 30 seconds, you're closing a door. You're closing a door down the hallway. So, okay, so they walk in through the door. They, they greet the recruiter. The recruiter's like, hey, so excited you're here. We're really excited to talk to you. Before we go any further, I just want to talk about our company for a second. So like there's four banners right there on the wall. It's like, hey, here's our core values. This is what we're all about. This is who we are. We're core. Betterment, accountability, teamwork, transparency, definitions. Here's, here's where we're going. We're going to be a $100 million company by 2030. Mm -hmm. We're going to have 400 team members. There's four or five more things. Here's how we're going to get there. We're going to hire the best talent the market has to offer. We're going to overpay them. We're going to create win-win-win scenarios. We're going to recruit like crazy, and we're going to build a meaningful moat through our marketing and recruitment. That's how we're going to get there. You walk another 10, 10, 20 feet. Here's our history. We got our corporate history up on the wall. Photos. My grandpa started this. Ralph Wilson started this company with 500 bucks in a pickup truck back in 1958. Here's the building that we moved in in the 60s. Like, this is where we're coming from, right? This, this is us. This is who we were 60 years ago. You turn the corner, and there's an org chart with 140 people. This is where we're at now. Like we're the second largest company mm -hmm. in this market. We're the largest non-PE backed one. Like, check it out. Like, aren't you excited to be a part of that? You go another 20 feet. And so, so like what we're closing is like, hey, this company has a vision. They're going somewhere, right? They came from they, somewhere. They've been somewhere too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they've been they came somewhere. came from really right. small. And like, and look wow, how much they've look come. at the scope. Definitely I'm coming from a 20 to 40 scope. person company. This, they've got 140, right? So mm -hmm. the, next, the next ones are really important. You walk them through the call center because the big objection that you're dealing with right now is, are they organized and do they have work? So like you mm -hmm. walk them through the call center where they see 25 people every day dispatching. Yeah, we're organized like crazy. Like, man, our guys get on the best jobs. We get all the jobs. This, this call center team over mm -hmm. here, they dealt with 800 phone calls today before noon. Like, yeah, we got leads. And so do you have like recorders around the office that are playing phone ring sounds too as they walk in? It's yeah, just... that, that'd be funny. <laughs> well, we actually got really intentional about the playlist, uh, about the like music that goes over the loudspeakers now because it used to be silent. So we started playing music. Mm -hmm. So then so then you walk well, them through the call I mean, center, you take them into the training room and like the idea there is, hey, here's the training room. This is where we train. We invest in our people, door closed. You yeah. walk them into the warehouse where they see $500,000 of material and five people behind a counter prepping to give people parts. So are they organized? Do they have support for me on my jobs? Yes. They walk through staging where they see all these jobs staged. Are they busy? Yes. And then you finally deposit them into the hiring room. It's a 10-minute tour, but like by the time you get there, you've closed most of their potential objections. They already know mm -hmm. about benefits. And the only thing that they're thinking about, it's, this is no longer, do I want to be here? This is, I want to be here. Am I good enough to be here? And it totally reframes yep. the conversation. No, I think that's a wonderful idea. I'm, I'm sitting here going, man, uh, the thing we come on these tours, John, I'm, I'm going to come work for you here in a second. Yeah, dude, let's um, do it. That's cool. No, I, I love that. Uh, it is... I mean, so you've hit on all the points, like when I'm, when I was a W2 employee looking for work, yep. stability, organization, yep. growth, like those yep. are the three things. Is it a stable yep. company? Is it organized? Is it going to grow? And do I have growth opportunity? And yep. all of those prerequisites were hit right out the gate yeah. before you even walk in there. 
Yeah, and, and then, then like at, said, at this point, I personally everything. sit down. I'm I'm mm-hmm. the one personally sitting across from all 25 of those interviews, and I like at this point we've already talked to them for probably an hour and a half, right? We had a phone screen. Recruiter talked to them a lot. They already know the benefits. They know the company. At this point, they've seen it, so they know and have seen it. And my role in this is: do their eyes light up when I tell them about the role? Are they going to be a culture fit when I explain what betterment and teamwork means to me? Can they get behind that? When I talk about where we're going and why we're going there, can they get behind that? And then if they basically pass my sniff test, then the hiring manager comes in for about five minutes and that's it. So like the actual sit down, our sit downs went from an hour and a half to like 25 total because we have like 90 minutes of prep to get them ready for, for that. Yeah. And so, I mean, now that we're at this point, what, I mean, you say as you're describing the position, you want to see their eyes yeah. light up. So, I mean, that that's definitely one aspect is that they're hungry. They want to work there. They, they're mm-hmm. excited. They come to work every morning, really go, go team, go. Yep. In terms of skill, I mean, is that the recruiter's job? Or are you doing that inside that meeting? No, or so we, kind of- like the last step in every process is a ride along. So like you have your phone screen, you have your tour, you have your sit down with John, you have your sit down with the hiring manager. Mm-hmm. And if you pass all those, then you're going to go do a ride along for a day. And you're going to basically get tested. You test us, we test you, see if it's a fit and you get an offer after that. So everything up to the mechanical. What dictated that ride along? Like what, what, what caused you to start doing those ride alongs? Oh, we've been doing that for a, years. I, it, is that a normal thing in industry? I have no idea. I know that we've been doing it for years. Yeah, I don't either. And so what would cause you to start doing that? Is it, we've always done it this way, so we're going to continue doing it this way. It's a great tool. Or was there a specific turning point for you that you were like, man. No, I mean, people, people, try, people can them. say anything in an interview. That's what I'm getting Yeah, at, the right? amount of times that I've sat down in an interview and someone's like, yeah, I know how to do freaking everything in the world. It's like, yeah, like, I really don't care. Like, I don't. You're going to go on a ride along and my guy's going to tell me if mm-hmm. you can. What I care about is, are you a culture fit? Are you going to be a, are you going to add to our average or are you going to take away from it? And then like mechanically, we'll figure that out tomorrow. That's a good point. Yeah, that, that's interesting. And then who does the ride along? Is it just a senior tech that you trust? Yeah. Yeah. We have a few ride along people, basically whoever's going to be really blunt. Like, Hey, this person's not mm-hmm. a fit. She, and like we, what we want. Those are my favorite employees. Hey, they're, they're the best. What we want is like, we want to hire the best that the market has. Like that is a very, Mm -hmm. that is important to us. So in our pre-screening questionnaire, there's like 15 questions, I think. And one of them is, is this a top 10% hire? And if it's not a top 10% hire in the recruiter's eyes, they don't even come in the door. Like we're not going to talk to them. We we want top 10% hires. And then the actual get to hire is we want top 5% real hires. Like, so you have to get through a few processes and we have enough interviews that we can just man, we can just go. Like, it's all good if we didn't have low quality candidates. We're, we're hitting it. We're hitting it hard. And I think that what I said earlier, uh, like off camera, was what we've done, I don't think is magical with recruitment. We're the best we've ever been at recruitment. But anyone could do what we're doing with recruitment if you are willing to put the investment into, obviously it takes an investment, right? But it, we yeah, would have I mean, had a better investment. company if we would have started earlier because we held on mm-hmm. to people that were no longer a fit or they didn't like they didn't want to be accountable because we couldn't hire or we didn't have a good enough hiring process to really like weed weed out people that weren't a great culture fit or mechanical fit. Whereas now we feel like we're doing or, we're doing a good job. Yeah, or or you brought them in and they you you like them, but they didn't like you, right? Because you didn't have that process in place to really drive that. So, I mean, yeah. that that's huge. I mean, that that's a in, really cool way of looking at it. In in because we've had that issue too, where we've we've we're a smaller company, so in the beginning, it was very hard to convince certain individuals, top tier talent, like, hey, yeah. come over here. You have enough work. You have this. You have that. When there's really no. Like I said, I think I said it in one of the first podcasts is we're, we're driving into a storage unit. <laughs> so yeah. It's, it's like, hey, top tier talent's going, guys, this this really isn't this. So we've had to yes. kind of get scrappy on how yes. we, so we ended up that, getting That's a, really, a good point. 
like we mm-hmm. our our recruitment game stepped up significantly when we changed our offices to one headquarters. And it's like yeah. now I think I I don't think correlation is causation here. Like we did several other things. Like we hired more recruiters. We really aligned focus. We built a a walkthrough. Pro- like we've done a lot of work on recruitment in order to be where we are. But our previous physical location was a deterrent to top candidates. And Chris Hoffman That's tweeted real. about this recently too. Like he's got this insane facility, and like yeah, oh, yeah like cool. yeah, people like yeah, driving up to that as a plumber, you're like okay like okay it like am i good enough to work here that's what you want candidates mm-hmm. to think when they walk in the door like this place has their stuff together am i up to their level yeah i saw i saw that tweet too that was a yeah uh, i love this facility it's so cool it doesn't look like a hv plumbing totally. or anything at all facility it looks like a i mean a red bulls facility or something crazy mm-hmm. like that but it, it's an interesting subject and so when you're when you're starting and you're smaller the goal is to create that environment through different means. Right. And so, I mean, just offering higher pay and higher packages in in my experience doesn't drive it. We, we couldn't even get people paying them higher because they're worried about all those auxiliary stability, organization, growth potential. And so it it becomes a a game of vision and charisma and character and who the company is and who you are as the owner. It's hard not to take it personally. Yeah, how how you explain it and who you are as the owner, I think the big distinguishment there is are you PE? Like that's real. Like the mm. the best candidates in the market right now that we're interviewing want nothing to do with private equity. And they say that as a, a part of, of their there, initial yeah. interview. They're like, "Hey, I'm the I'm the best tech over at this company. Like I have an HVAC tech that we're trying to close on right now and he's amazing." And one of his, one of his biggest things, like it's, he can go get a job anywhere and he's going to get paid a lot wherever he goes. And I believe he's choosing us. And one of the big reasons is we're not PE backed. Like we're not, we're, it's me. So people can be, yeah, people can be really choosy. And I think like, like you said, there's a, it's hard to present them with, with the why of, of why you're the spot. Yeah. And so the story that always comes to mind is I think PayPal at one point early on in their days, they hit a rough patch and and most of their team didn't work for pay for for something crazy, like three months or something like that. And that always comes to mind is it's like, Hey, these people were willing to work for three months, six months, whatever the time period is no pay because of vision. And so it, it's really important as you're walking through your steps, you're talking about where you were, where you've been, mm-hmm. where you're going, what your vision is. I mean, I think it's huge to capitalize on that as a smaller company who's focused on growth, who's focused on yeah. giving these people these opportunities. On the, the downside to that though, right, is you're, they're holding you accountable to deliver on that, right? Yeah. So they're holding you accountable on growth and they're holding you accountable. And so it's a, it's a rough place to be in, but that truly is how you get really top tier talent in a, in a smaller company and just recognizing and and selling it that way. Yeah. Um, But uh, one day I I love that process though. Like the walkthrough and everything. I think the important. It's wonderful. Yeah. I, I, I mean, and, and frankly it's worked, right? So like we are closing, Mm -hmm. if we are making a hire in the field. They are a rock star. They are a top 1% in our local market rock star, which is wild to me, right? Like I had no idea how many million dollar plumbers so there cool. are. I had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea how many million dollar electricians mm-hmm. there are. And like it reset my expectations for my own team because I used to think, hey, 600,000 is pretty all right. But then I interviewed 20 million dollar plumbers and it's like 600,000 is not apparently, all right, 600,000 is less than these 20 people. So like, that's crazy. What are we missing? So it really forced us to level up internally too, just because we were like, okay, like this, this is real. I think the, the important thing on hiring for me is have a process and it doesn't have to be as robust as my process is. Obviously there's like more going on there, but it would be, be deliberate. Yeah. Be deliberate and understand what your position is and 
it, what you said, right? That there's doors that you have to close. And so in yeah. that process that you create in the hiring to close as many of those as you, your business can. Yeah. And understand that your business can't close all of them, right? I'm not going to yeah. be able to close the same doors that you will, but the person that I need at this time, I need to close whatever doors I can to get them to a point where maybe they would have a better shot at saying yes than vice versa. And mm -hmm. you can't even get there if you don't hire a recruiter. Boom. Pretty much. I mean, you gotta yeah, like you get, <laughs> you got to have the recruiter well, to like the, shoot your shot. Yeah, you, you do. You freaking do. Because the, and this is, this is how this whole like second recruiter thing started for us like four or five months ago was we're like this, the surface area of the top of our funnel is not wide enough. We are not, sh we are not mm -hmm. shooting enough shots because if only one in 10 interviews is a rock star, then like we need to have a hundred interviews. Like 10 is not going to cut yeah. it and 20 is not going to cut it because we're growing and we can't grow without the best people that this market has to offer. So yeah, you just don't get there because what happens is hiring always gets dealt. Like it's always somebody's second priority. Like it's the GM or the ops manager, or mm -hmm. the service manager. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I do the recruiting. And it's like, yeah, you also fight fires every day. Like, like you're, you're doing other things. And it's, if, if it's everyone's focus, it's no one's focus. And I think a good thing to remember too is it, there's a snowball effect, right? You hire good people, which then drives more revenue, which allows you to drive more leads, which then yep. allows you to hire more people. Yep. And then the this, this snowball that, that grows and grows and grows. Well, and, but if and you miss a step Killers want to work with killers. That, I mean, that, that's the other part yeah. of it. If you're like, hey, oh. everyone else here is a killer. Like at the, the least, like this was an interview I had yesterday and he was the top shot at his current company and and he and we were talking about expectations and I was like to be clear I know that you're the top shot where you are every single person on my existing team is driving more than you right now like everyone here is a killer and it's okay yeah. if you're not a rock star but like these five guys are and like this is the expectation coming in and and people of the high caliber really like to work with people of the high caliber. Oh yeah. It's a competitive, it's a, in to, to well, get they, to they that level, build. to that mentality. They want to build. They want to build and they, they just are yeah. hungry and, and that hunger drives and feeds off each other and builds this yep. really cool culture. I mean, I think we talked about that with, I forget the guy's name, but down in, oh, down in Southern California, the, he built a $200 million, I want to say it's Uzman or something like that down in LA. No, anyway. I don't know. Someone else tell us who it is, but the the guy, I mean, just the culture there is very, very oh, hungry. Oh, Ishmael and from Next Gen? Ishmael. Yeah. Yes, yes, there yeah, you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you talk to anyone who's worked there, you go on any of his Instagram, Facebook posts, and they talk about people who've worked there with him, and the culture there is just incredible. Everyone mm -hmm. there is driving, like true hustle culture, which is... Just wild yeah. to see when you get a, that many people hustling in the same yeah. direction. It will, yeah, and that's that's what's been happening for us over the past like four or five months. Where I'm not exaggerating when I say that every hire has been a rock star. Like everyone, we are knocking out of the park. Every hire has added like to our average. Everyone, mm -hmm. and because we're we're interviewing so many more people than ever. And the pool, and we got better at selection. We got like, we became a better employer. We did, there was a lot that goes into that, but like, it is real where now every hire is a game changing hire. Like every new guy is a million dollars, million freaking dollars. Yeah. Like that's crazy. That was my entire company seven years ago. I was going to say that. That's, that's, yeah. Like that's, that those two guys out of the truck. I, know. I mean, and, that, and I hired all. three of those this week. So it's, yeah, yes. it's, it's crazy to me how much this, the, the needle moving higher moves the needle. So for everyone going from zero to, to 5 million, right? The goal is to get five of these guys and you're yeah. there. Yeah, they're and there. So, and I think um, it's like, you have to, how do you present yourself? How do you like, we've, we have people walk into our office now because they can walk in anywhere. They walk into our office and they sit down mm -hmm. and they ask you like some very real questions about your business. And that's what rock stars are going to do. That's what the needle movers are going to do. 
Like they want to understand how you dispatch. They want to understand how you price. They want to understand what the org chart looks like and why it looks like that. Like they're going to ask some probing questions about your business because they are evaluating you to make sure that you can supply them with what they need to be a rock star. So when you get somebody asking you those types of questions, like buckle the hell up and make it a good offer because they're they're going to be a game changer. Yeah. Is there any, and this is moving off, off topic a little bit, but there are there any red flags that you hear and you're like, nope, this guy's out um, or girl? Yeah, so I think a lot of complaining, like vibes, like what are vibes? Like, are you Easy. super complaining? Are you just like trash talking the old place? It's like basic stuff. And I genuinely mean this. I'm not exaggerating about this at all. If your eyes don't light up when I'm talking about the role, like that is a, that's a non-hire. Easiest example. Well, we've, we've all felt that. I mean, that's not, that's, that's not a crazy thing to say. I mean, we've all felt no, that. No, it's not, you, but people still hire, they still hire that person. Yeah. And they try to convince them that this is the right role. And I just don't do it anymore. Like I had someone today mm -hmm. that was like, they came in for an ISR interview. They get in there and they're, they're like, they didn't want it. They're an in-home salesperson mm -hmm. for like roofing. Like I'm not, I'm not going to give them anything that they want. This is a phones sales position. And, and he kept trying to like, he just really needs a job. And I can totally receive that. Yeah. But like, he's taking this out of an act of desperation not out of the, I really want this role. So we, it's not going to be higher. Like I feel for him personally, but like mm -hmm. if his eyes weren't lighting up, but I would have had to convince him that this was the right role for him. And I used to sell people on the role and now I sell people on the company. And I think that's a really important distinction because if, if your candidate flow is really low, then you are selling people on the role as well as the company. Like, hey, here's why you should be a sales plumber. You can make a lot of money. You can blah, 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 blah. And like, yeah, that's a, certainly a part of it. But like, do you like talking to customers all day long? Do you want to be able to present options? This is what that looks like. Do you, do you want that? Does that excite you? Are you hungry? Do you, yeah. Do you yeah. like being are, out there? Are you entrepreneurial? Are you scrappy? Or would you rather like be working on pipes? Like neither one's right or wrong. But like, if I try to convince you to take something, you're not going to mm -hmm. be a rock star in that role. Like, Maybe one in a yeah, hundred. It's, it's self-driven. That, that's a good point because I think it, when it comes down to it, it's a self-driving motivation, right? Yeah. These people are all very intrinsically motivated for whatever yeah. reason, money, status, whatever. And if they don't have it, you, that doesn't visibly show when you're asking them yeah. these questions or explaining the company, explaining the position, yeah. explaining the opportunity, then they're not going to suddenly become intrinsically motivated down totally. the line. It's a totally. good point. Yeah, you know, yeah, I think people so that, just don't have the courage to do that. M mainly, and, I, and that's not like a, I'm brave or anything, like the only reason I have the courage is because we have so much candidate flow that I'm able to, I'm mm -hmm. enabled to have that courage. But like, if I didn't, I'd be in the same boat as everybody else. Awesome. So recap, 30 employees, HR slash recruiting, focus on recruiting does a great job at, at providing a recruitment flow, which then for therefore flows into getting better candidates, snowballing into a, I mean, a better company just in general. An additive culture. Yep. Builds more revenue. Yeah. I love yep. it. I mean, I, I think, like I said, once we close on this deal, we're going to, well, we're, we're going to be at a part-time hearing shortly, maybe just recruiting, not HR, but just recruiting to help us out. Yeah. You've convinced me. It's good. And I think just set clear expectations. Like, hey, you need to talk to 50 people a week. You need to bring in 20 for interviews. We're going to hire two to three. That's that's ours. You mm -hmm. obviously do whatever fits your current like <laughs> recruitment <laughs> flow. But like people tends to be the biggest barrier to growth. You can You can spend more money on leads. You can buy trucks. But people is the barrier. Mm -hmm. Good people. Good, Good people. people's better. Yeah, I'm 100%. in. You convinced me. Converted him. All right. We did it. We did it. Well, you man, that was solid. Anyway, I feel like well, see, I want a third recruiter. Like that's what I want now. Yeah, this was this was a good episode. I hope this helped. I hope this helped people. Recruitment is like a real man, thing. No, I, approach it like sales. I'm and so you'll excited be fine. to implement this. This is this is on par. This episode is on par for me for as call center. Like the minute that we finish up call center. I immediately, nice. the next day, well, first I wrote everything down and the next day I'm like, 
we're doing this, we're doing this, we're doing <laughs> tomorrow. My head's going to be spinning with recruiter. Need, need part-time recruiter. Start yeah. recruiting for this position, this position, this position. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah, on I, I think I mean, setting priorities, like just, setting a scorecard and, and like really setting a process. And what I found was helpful is like, when we think about, when you think about sales, you have a customer archetype. How do you think about technician archetype? Like, what do they do? Right? Like who, what mm -hmm. are they like? Like our customer, our technician avatar is like scrappy, entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial, like, yeah. like curious, intellectual curiosity, humility. And then, and then you take that and you, you turn it into a real, a real person. So like, Hey, it's somebody that likes monster drinks. That's going to roll down the highway, listening to like Christian rock or whatever. Like that's one of our archetypes. That is literally one of them. And then there's like three other mm -hmm. things. They tend to like motocross. They tend to like this. And that's a sales archetype and install archetype what in the interview he's going to pull out his phone and he's going to show you pictures of jobs that he's installed that's an installer 100%, the will. moment that happens that's, that's an, an installer. installer like immediately that's an installer yeah. so so like so what we did was we came up with here's their personality traits here's the things that they do and mm -hmm. here's the behaviors that you're going to notice when you talk to them so we did that for every hire in the company so that way because it's not me out there recruiting initially i'm not doing the top of funnel i'm yeah. doing the weeding so like our recruiters need to be armed with the information that they give us the best candidates when they, when they see them. Like, how do you identify a top 10% yeah, hire? It looks like. 100%. You so know. you create a technician archetype. Not to do that. Yeah, because I mean, we're going from eight, nine employees to probably 30, 35 here in yep. two months. So about to load up, man. Go for recruiter mode. Yeah. I love it. I cool. Love it. This was good. This was a good episode. Awesome. All right. Thanks everybody for Super tuning helpful. in. Own and operated twice a week, Tuesday, Thursdays, we're, we're dropping bombs. We probably have to get back and do some business model analysis. So we'll do that next time. And thanks for checking it out. Yeah. Let us know what you want to hear. Yeah, yep. Appreciate you all. Hit subscribe. Thanks for tuning in to Owned and Operated, the podcast for home service entrepreneurs. If you enjoyed today's episode, please hit the like button and subscribe to the podcast. If you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover, Feel free to reach out. You can find me on Twitter at, at Wilson Companies. I'll see you next time.